Okay, welcome back. Um, I'm hoping this session is going to be a bit um, more interactive than the previous session on um, visuals. That's something I wanted to show you. This is more about a, uh, an experience I personally had uh, with online training. Now, how many of you are currently delivering online training? That's actually perfect. Okay. Um, the audience I did want were people that were not, had, did not have any experience with online training, which was my case about a year ago, and that are looking into it uh, for different reasons why uh, we need to move into that one. Once again, I want to thank our um, sponsors. Um, I'm going to, not that I want to give, well, yes, I do want to give you special credit, uh, Ronald, but uh, I'm going to be mentioning Versoft during the, uh, the presentation, and the, what I'm talking about today simply could not have taken place without uh, Versoft and Microsoft Learning. Microsoft Learning for providing the, the mock, and you'll see that they were actually, uh, Microsoft, more than Microsoft Learning, were directly involved in Versoft. We could not have done this without the uh, hosted labs. Now, I'm also um, demonstrating the Veeam products very often to uh, students and talking about it. Uh, very interesting data protection technology, as you know. And uh, Sammy has done a brilliant job uh, with Applixer, uh, and uh, s what's the name of the company again? No, the, uh, the, 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 um, the one who are inviting us for dinner tonight. This is terrible. So, so Velto, did I get it right? Okay, because the reason I was hesitating to say it is uh, last time I, I completely murdered it. So, so well too. Okay, pop, pop, pop. Um, anyway, yeah, thanks. Um, I don't know if you've ever been involved in setting up one of those summits or those day zeros, but boy, uh, money is definitely the important aspect and we couldn't do it without them. Okay, why is this important? Um, and I was saying I was hoping for an audience that did not have that much experience or no experience whatsoever with uh, online training. I tend to accept the fact that we're going to move to that platform and we need to become uh, quickly familiar with it. There are a number of reasons uh, for that. Okay? First, um, I got Karen to send me and Ronald referred to it, the new mission statement on Microsoft Learning or Microsoft Learning Experience as the, the new name is, to grow a proficient and enthusiastic ecosystem through online learning experiences powered by the Microsoft Cloud. Do you see anything about manuals on that mission statement? The interesting thing is that for most of us, 90% eh, to 100% of our job is still with people coming in classroom, getting a paper mock or some type of a, a mock, and we're just not there for the time being. And yet Microsoft is saying, okay, this is what we're doing now. The entire business that we've been doing for a number of years stops now. We're moving to something completely different. The fact is, that's not quite true. Um, the instructor-led training, the classroom training, the paper-based training that we are accustomed to, that will continue. But it's a legacy product. So Microsoft will continue to support that, and we will continue to deliver courses. The first version of that slide mentioned migration to online. Now, when you are in immigration, you start from something and you move completely to the other portion. And I changed that to expansion to online, and that's something that uh, Karen mentioned. We are not moving to a different platform per se. We're expanding the choices for our students and our customers. So you will still have people that will prefer uh, paper. And I've had some feedbacks on the training that I'm going to talk about, where some people said, eh, that's just not for me. Uh, I want the dead tree edition of the manual. Uh, it doesn't fit my schedule. I want to come in a class, lock out the rest of the world, be focused on PowerShell or Exchange or whatever for five days, and move out. I cannot time shift in this way. Others said, thank God for that flexibility. I'll never do any other form of training. I love it. Now, the other thing is, Europe is late. 
Um, Ken Rosen was telling me they had the, when they announced the um, MLX, MLO, at the uh, partner conference, they did a show of hands among their partners that were present. They were uh, CPLS partners uh, there, and they were saying, okay, how many of you are delivering online content for which it represents the majority of your revenue? And as per their own experience from the field, Ken expected about 70, I'm sorry, 50% of the people to say online is a majority training. That's not something you find in Europe. The number they actually got was closer to 70%. Now understand that people that go to the Worldwide Partner Conference are more typically the more advanced the ones that want to get on the ball as quickly as possible. But that means that close to three quarters of the top line partners, CPLS in America, consider are completely aligned with Microsoft on an aspect and consider it their future is online. And there are different reasons and uh, Seth is not with us uh, at this time, but certainly the distances. Okay. Um, I pretty much can cross Switzerland from one side to the other by stepping outside of my bed. In America, your nearest classroom is going to be six hours, eight hours a day away. So there is the uh, question of the distance. There is also an opening to different technology, which is different than in Europe. However, we are late. Where is your, does anyone do mostly online training here? And again, I realize this audience is more traditional. Yeah, you see? I mean, this would be America. At least half of you would say, yeah, that's our business. That means that for trainers like ourselves, the opportunities are few. And we don't like to do stuff that we've never done before. The first version of a course, the first time you deliver a course, especially since I have, it seems a tradition that whenever I'm going to deliver the very first course in a technology I've never worked on before, I mean, I've never trained on before, um, I get the super duper geek in my classroom. Uh, I just delivered on System Center Orchestrator. The guy had Microsoft Consulting Services not only implement the uh, installation, uh, but had one, of the, one among the top 10 uh, SCUM and SCO experts from Microsoft sitting at their desk for the last three years with access to the internal Microsoft knowledge base. And I'm like, what the hell do you think I can teach you from that point on? And you, ha you had a person that is... Uh, has so much more access than I do. Okay? So, but we don't like to be uh, surprised and we would like to have some opportunities to uh, practice. And that's a bit uh, tricky. What I'm trying to say is we can do it. I was going to change that to yes we can, but I guess this doesn't work as well as it used to a few years ago. Uh, why can we? Well, the technology is there. And that just was not the case a few years back. Um, and if we talk a little bit about that particular project. I'm going to talk of something that happened this year, but this is actually a discussion that has been going on for a number of years in Switzerland. Now, Switzerland is my, uh, the place where I work most of the time, but this is the same thing that is happening in your country. Because I've worked with uh, subsidiaries in other countries and they have the same issues. Now, we've been talking a little bit about the partner whether MCT should become partners or not and what the different levels of partner program is but most of the partner program besides paying a fee will require a certain amount of certification from some of the staff member of the program and the partners are not certified why is that so the project was to get them up and uh, ready and get an MCSA uh, 2012 certification. So you know this has 410, 411, 412. Okay. The fact is that I tend to see a lot of people in classroom, mock classrooms. It is extremely rare that I see Microsoft partners in those classrooms. I see corporate uh, entities, I see large accounts, I very rarely see a Microsoft partner, even a, a large Microsoft partners. The small to medium partners, never at all. And the reason is quite simple. Don't forget that Switzerland, the economic infrastructure of Switzerland is, I think, about 95% of the businesses are less than 25 people. So it is a country of small to medium businesses. That is the case, in fact, of most countries in Europe. 
The partners could not afford that. Um, there was a question of cost. The, um, the cost in Switzerland uh, for a course is, let's say, about $3,500 per for the five-day course. Okay, that's going to change from one country to another, but just so that you understand a little bit the uh, dynamics on the uh, system. That was one aspect, and quite honestly, I mean, the partners told me that was probably the biggest aspect for, uh, for them. Uh, the other one was, I'm paying this guy. I cannot afford to lose five days of revenue from that particular engineer. So we had those particular issues. The uh, partners were at the same time, it's been a problem for years, the partners were saying, we need to get certified. And this was coming, becoming a problem in the entire food chain because not only were they saying, I need to get certified, but they were telling Microsoft, you want us to be certified, you need to find a solution for us. It's your problem. And somehow Microsoft, they managed to convince Microsoft that it was to some extent. Um, second thing that happens, I don't know if you're familiar with that, Microsoft is also, besides changing its partner program, has been changing their uh, distributor model and pushing a lot of the responsibility of the marketing uh, and training down to the distributor levels with this notion of a value-added distributor. So the distributors were looking at an opportunity to maintain uh, their status with Microsoft as a way of um, uh, training the um, the partners. We'd been looking at this problem for a uh, number of years. There were typically, we came, there were four different proposals that took place. One of them was, okay, let's work with a CPLS partner. Well, that would have been easy, uh, but it didn't change any of the metrics. Basically, everyone had to take off for an entire week, and everyone had to pay about $3,500. Uh, Microsoft might have helped a bit, the volume might have allowed to reduce, but did not work uh, really in that sense. Um, another alternative was that Microsoft become the CPLS. And on certain, uh, they, they do regularly boot camps around a mock content, but for different reasons, and I'm somewhat glad about it, uh, making a full mock course was a bit of an issue for Microsoft, which is kind of makes sense because that competes directly with the CPLS business. And that did not address the quality issues. Now, we might think, you know, CPL, but yes, the purpose of the CPLS program is to ensure that the systems are delivered in a particular, at least a minimum level of quality. Distributors, partners just did not have the technology on board to deliver those uh, classes. Then we looked at a, uh, using MS Press. Now, a number of you have probably done certification training on MS Press. Okay, let's be clear. MS Press is a self teaching method. It is not for delivery in a classroom. So we were not going to provide any benefit to the partners by going that route because we could have just as easily given them the book and let them deal with it. And visibly they were not. And the last solution which I can't believe I actually proposed that because I must have been crazy that day was to actually develop custom courseware around the uh, skills measured on the course understanding that the partners already had a good level of understanding of the technology. Um, I might have overestimated the capabilities of the partners uh, in Switzerland. I think that's true in most countries, okay? especially in the small to medium business segment. Um, the skills, the knowledge is not necessarily where you want to it. Anyway, I think you can quickly understand that any of the solution was either primarily too costly. I mean, custom courseware, I cannot do something a tenth as good as mock for five times the price. And anyone who's developed a real courseware realizes that as someone was saying yesterday, it's not a matter of hours, it might not even be a matter of weeks, it might be a matter of months to create something that is uh, valid. Um, or it was just plain too difficult to create and again, custom courseware be the same situation or trying Microsoft to become a CPLS uh, was an issue. So. That changed basically end of uh, 2012, where basically a couple of things happened. First, I started working with Ronald with a couple of CPLSs, well, primarily one primary CPLS in Switzerland, and became familiar with the hosted labs. So one of the primary issues we had, which was providing the host machines to do run the labs and things like that, which the distributor could not provide, the partners could not provide, that was result. Secondly, Link, um, was now 
good enough that you could do remote delivery. More importantly, as an MCT, I obviously had access to Office 365 like you all do. Right? Okay, you do know that as an MCT, you can go to your TechNet subscription and you get a five uh, license Office 365 subscription is the E3 program, which includes SharePoint, includes Link, and includes Exchange. Now, if you have even a five user license, that, does, that means that any of those five licenses can then create a Link meeting that can be followed by 10, 20, 100 different participants. And we addressed a, um, another issue that way, whereas there was no infrastructure that we were provided either for the labs or for the course. We did have a very nice uh, training room, and I'll talk about that later, but we did not have a way of communicating. I'm sorry, I saw your a hand uh, raise itself. Okay, the question is, is 365 only for a year? Absolutely. The good thing is I got on the program a bit early because I wanted to get on it, so I was supposed to get it for a year. At the time, they gave you 250 licenses. Um, I, I, I've given licenses. I think I've, given, I've tried to give three licenses to every one of my family members. Uh, a couple of the dogs in the family have a license. I still have not been able to use all 250 of them. Um, but the nice thing is, after a year, I was like, okay, that was great. I was able to test it, and I got a little email, email from Microsoft. Uh, thank you for your support on Office 365. We're renewing this for an extra year. Ooh. And then a year after that, again. Now, that was not done through the MCT program. That was done through the partner program. But they've been pushing in that sense, and that is one of the reasons that the MCTs have access to Office 365. Another thing that's happening is... Um, and we don't quite know much about it, but Karen kind of mentioned uh, about it that she's developing a solution around software and things like that. If you're in a partner program, and I'm a registered partner, that's basically the ones that don't pay anything, you can uh, purchase what is known as MAPS, and MAPS includes software. It was actually one of the solutions we were looking with uh, Karen uh, when there was the original lead, whether we should have MAPS for MCTs. Now, it didn't fit uh, for that particular purpose, but MAPS is moving to an um, online or cloud internal use uh, IUR. Internal use something. Internal use rights, yeah, exactly. So, um, Karen seems to indicate that we will get uh, Office 365, we will get Azure when the program is uh, announced in January. That's what I got a little bit from the uh, keynote. I hope. I don't know if you got the same thing. And if that does not satisfy you, there's also the MAPS. MAPS is currently, I think, $400 per year. That's an easy investment to make as far as a business is concerned. MAPS, I'm sorry? Oh, what does it mean? Microsoft Action Pack. Yeah, the Microsoft Action Pack. Sorry, yeah. Denise? Okay, so th you're saying the, the price of maps in England is how? Okay. Yeah, there is different, uh, there are different uh, scenarios. Um, I just set up my sister on Office 365. I can't remember if it was six or eight dollars per user per month. I mean, it's, it's negligible. Uh, and if you don't already have an exchange email, you've probably been wishing that you had an exchange email for a number of years. So a lot of people are going to be willing to pay that just for the exchange. And then you'll start using Link because it'll allow you for the online training. And I'll show also a little bit what we did with uh, SharePoint. Yep. Valid point. Yeah, the Office 365, to repeat what you're saying, Office 365 will start with just one single license user. They actually have, I believe, a program called something... Office 365, because Office 365 means a lot of things within the Microsoft uh, SKUs, but there's one where it's for single licenses or professional or something like that. I don't know if that's still valid or anything like that. You had a, another question? Okay. 
Right. So the inclusion of Yammer in Office 365. Right. We are three of so the, the um, comment was about including now that Yammer is included, that it was a great way to maintain the interaction of the students after the class was over through using uh, Yammer. Martin, again. Um, I, it's kind of a professional Facebook. I would say Yammer is a bit of a professional Facebook. I, It's a yeah, it's a clan, it's kind of a closed community. I think that the, the term for that is a club, when you don't allow you know people you don't like in those sorts. So yeah, no, um, Yammer is kind of an extension. Now, as you will see, the way we went around that was with SharePoint, and that is one of the things which we can't do. There are a couple of things that I want to highlight that you can do on online that you cannot do with an in-person class. Um, you can obviously create a Facebook page or a Yammer page for your classes. I don't know if any or one of us do, uh, but now that it was online, it kind of forced me to create a SharePoint site and to integrate and I'll demonstrate, and that's an added value, I think, for uh, classes. So the two things that happened was Link became available for me as an MCT, was sufficiently capable that I could use it, although we did get some feedback about the quality of the audio on some of the participants, uh, and I don't know where that stemmed because I didn't get it from uh, everywhere, and certainly the hosted labs were a really big enabler on that aspect. Now, as I said, um, it also, uh, I included a SharePoint because you don't have a classroom where you're going to meet, so you do need to create a virtual meeting space around those environments. And I've had a couple of um, conversations with people that pointed out that one of the things that you miss when you do online is the time that you spend with your students in the break. It's getting to your students to know who they are because you tend to connect, deliver, disconnect. What I was very fortunate uh, to have is that all of the participants were partners in the program, and I'm doing partner readiness in Microsoft, uh, for Microsoft in the uh, French-speaking part of Switzerland, so I knew a lot of them from Tech at Night's different training that I was delivering. What we did do was we finished, we wrapped up the program with an in-person, in-classroom, one-day revision to kind of review everything. Now, there was the discussion whether the first session in the program should be done in the same manner, but that is something that I would suggest that you do. We're not going to do it, but is a get-together, so there is a physical connection, people relate, before you go on the online. So it's not a requirement. It will work quite, quite well without it, but moving, I think what is really key is to move to the hybrid training method versus the pure online or the pure uh, classroom environment. A um, couple of things on the format of the class, and I've, I mentioned uh, this. First, this was done in nine two-hour sessions. I was wondering if we were going to be able to complete it. We had one class, uh, 411, where I added an extra session. So we did a, a tenth um, two-hour session. That might have been primarily because we did encounter some issues uh, in a couple of the classes that delayed us by half an hour. Uh, the fact that the 412 was done within nine sessions of two hours uh, seems to indicate, I think, that yes, you can do it for pretty much any five-day class. Now, if the nice thing is if you add uh, nine times two, so you come to about 18 hours, which is much less than what you would do in an uh, in-person class training. The way we went around that is that since we had the hosted labs from uh, Versoft, the students were doing their labs on their own schedule and now on their own time. And therefore, that allowed them to have the complete flexibility of when it uh, suited them. Some people like that a lot. The fact is that some people said, wait a second, we have three sessions a week. That means that the Tuesday and Thursday where there was normally no session, I pretty much have to do my labs and I have to do the labs on the weekends because I'm typically running late. So some people found out to be very demanding on their schedule, and I respect that. Um, some others, like myself, did enjoy the flexibility 
of it. Okay, so um, that will generate its own issues, and we need to be uh, clear about that. As I mentioned, we had the in-person uh, revision day, and we ran the program over a two-month period. So that means three weeks for the um, the training. Typically, we would overlap by one week because one session was displaced or something like that. Uh, it happened at least one, I think once in two of the courses, so we had an extra date that followed on. Um, and then we normally waited for two weeks before doing the revision, and they were supposed to finish their exams by the end of the second month. Uh, we're going to be changing that and probably cramming the revision day into the same first month. And the primary reason was they said if we're following an MCSA program where you have got uh, three different courses and exam, that's just too hard to be constantly in training. So they wanted a one month of downtime before the different uh, courses. Okay. Um, I'm spending some time here because that's, those are questions that you will ask yourself. For example, the duration. I still think that works out well. We tried a um, three hour session. We never repeated the dat. Now I know that some classes are given over a full day online. I cannot believe that people would watch a uh, TV screen for that long. Even Harry Potter for a full day gets a bit tiring after a while. Um, the other thing was there were complaints about the schedule, as I mentioned, of three sessions per week. That seems rather intense. People would have preferred probably two sessions and things like that. That meant that we would have run the program over about a month and a half. And I was pretty much the one that vetoed that simply because it is my belief from my experience that if you start to do a class over a month and a half, they cannot remember the first uh, week by the time you completed that. So you do need to keep it within pretty much a month so that it still remains uh, coherent. I might be wrong though. So we do have to uh, evaluate that aspect of the, uh, the thing. And as I said, the in-person was really helpful for people to build relationship and uh, rapport. Hey, it's all about me. So what was the benefit for myself? Well, as I said, I was really happy to have an opportunity to deliver online training. Um, it also was a bit of a special case for me because I don't do certification training very often. Most of the course I deliver are to large accounts for a specific uh, exchange or uh, uh, Windows, but one course. I normally, and they don't go for certification, they just want to train on that particular product. So to follow them through the entire path was rather interesting. The other thing which was really interesting was as, a, as referrals for the partners, for Microsoft, and for the distributor. You have to understand that using my Office 365 and my um, um, relationship with Ronald, I basically provided an infrastructure that they did not have. So they kind of perceived that any online training has to be done through Mark because he's got the keys to all the stuff. Okay, little did, do they know. Martin. The, uh, the, um, the distributors and the partners. The, uh, the fact is that there have been some other discussions, and, but uh, in particular since the distributor has this charge of um, doing this value-added distribution and taking care of the training, uh, following this, I've been contacted by one more distributor that's looking into doing uh, training for the partners and want, don't want to leave the business uh, left to that. And the, to my belief, uh, they contacted me directly. They didn't even ask, uh, go through Microsoft to ask them, who do we contact to be able to enable that? Okay. Beg your pardon? That was a distributor. Um, oh, by the way, that's something I maybe should explain. It sounds like we do, are not doing this strictly through distributors and without CPLS, there was a, a CPLS partner. The CPLS pro partner provided the courseware, provided the uh, relationship with Ronald for the, uh, the invoicing of the, uh, the labs and provided the uh, MTM and the framework so that it was a, an official uh, legal uh, thing. Yeah, good point. Yeah, I'm not trying to skirt. On the contrary, I tend to be the person who blocks training because it doesn't follow the, uh, the Microsoft rules. Uh, it goes to our credibility. Okay. Now, the, uh, yeah, I don't think you're really interested, but it, was, it earned me about $8,000 per course. So when was the last time that you made $8,000 on a uh, mock class? It's been a while for me. Now, the interesting thing is that that represented a uh, larger uh, revenue for me per course 
at a price which was about a third than the regular training for the partners. And it was clear for them that the $1,500 uh, Swiss francs that they were charged was the key reasons why they moved to that particular program. I should, or you should, uh, be my guest and give me three, 365 uh, day access to your virtual machines, okay? <laughs> Ronald, outside of the room. <laughs> okay, uh, the platform. So Link was used to um, do the presentation. Basically, the primary things that I used was the PowerPoint, since this is mock. You're going to not to lack the interaction uh, on the uh, system, which is a, an issue, okay? And that's the real problem with the online. First thing, I told you that three hours was too long. We reduced it to two hours with two five-minute breaks. So basically, I did not keep them online for more than 40 minutes. And you need to think completely of changing the way you arrange your classes around uh, online uh, training. The best way with the limitations of Link to kind of keep them interacted interactive is polls and that is my mistake I was using them I did not use them enough I've had some surprise I'll talk about that later on Martin polls um, where you will ask a questions and if, uh, the question is what is a poll so you have um, what is ADFS uh, it's the uh, new initials for Jean-Claude Van Damme. Uh, it is a technology for authentication it is the new version of virtualization and to have people answer this. One thing that you can use is the questions at the end of the modules and rephrase them as a poll. Yes, you can. Um, the, the question was, can you do on-demand polls at the, the moment? And the answer is, yes, you can. Yes, you, yes we can. Both. Okay, both. The answer is I did both before and during the class. And the way you should do it is both, is uh, before. And I did it inside the class because I forgotten something or I didn't have time. Uh, so, right way and the real way. I me also to do the, um, use the whiteboards from time to time. We don't have a blackboard to show the demonstrates and we need to do that very often on Office 365. So, uh, use the whiteboard. It is great to have a pen-enabled computers whenever you're doing online training to do, use the, the whiteboard. Demonstrations, obviously, using, once again, uh, Ronald's uh, infrastructure. And use the chats for all the questions. So that's another aspect. The group I was handling was still rather small, but you do not want to leave audio on during uh, online training, uh, because you will get a <sighs> Yeah, exactly. And then the woof, woof, the dog, you know, who's happy to see his master. Or the really embarrassing, uh, you know, honey, you didn't put the uh, toilet seat back down. Uh, that sort of thing. So do yourself a favor, do if your students a favor, turn off the audio and ask that all questions go through the chat. The single most enjoyed feature of the online training was the fact that every single session was recorded and was stored on the SharePoint site. Now, that was used for two purposes for my students. First, some of them, because of the schedule, could not attend every single session, so they, because they were working at a customer, so they would listen to it later on. And a number of them, pretty much all of them, told me they were using them to revise the material, so that when they were preparing for the exam, they would read the manual, and then they would say, okay, how was Mark presenting on that particular aspect? What was the demo he did at that time? So recording is something that we cannot do on online, and that's why I'm saying it is not a second choice. It is really an alternative to in-class uh, uh, in uh, training. Certainly the biggest one, Martin. Um, when you, good question. Let me, I'll come back to the, how I make recording in a second. So, a couple of lessons regarding uh, Link. It is not a virtual classroom tool. Okay. It is something that I had to use because that's what I had. That being said, it's included in Office 365 and it was a big enabler. As I said, without it, I could not have delivered that particular class. But it's not the one I would recommend. Um, prepare ahead of time. 
The big surprise for me was the amount of work this required. There's a lot of work, and uh, in answer to Ronald's comment about having to raise his price, I believe I, r I earned every single one of those $8,000 on the training. There is a lot of work that you will do, even though the hours in front of the students are much uh, less. And use the, uh, the chat for questions. So let me, sure. Mm -hmm. um, the, the question is, with the money that I made, should I, I uh, use a different tool? That was, remember I was providing the infrastructure, which is kind of a rare scenario for the MCT. and. Um, this was a part of a beta, so we just went with what we had. Would I be willing to put money? I'm just not sure that I'm going to be delivering enough uh, of those that I should provide in infrastructure to my CPLS. And the reason why I'm not looking into that is I want to see M uh, MLX before, so I'm hoping to be moving to MLX uh, in time uh, instead of not having to go through the, uh, the process. So um, this is quickly what you can't see. Sorry about that. This is the um, invitation email I sent to uh, everyone for the, uh, the training. Uh, and it explains what we're going to do, shows them links to the different SharePoint and things like that, and then simply the join online meeting. And once you, ha you connect to the, uh, um, the site, so the ex uh, users can use either the link web app or they will be using the uh, link full application if they want to. Do I have internet connectivity? Have a good meeting. We're connecting you. Um, you will see how you'd go about uh, offering polls and uh, different meetings. Okay, I'll come to that in a second. Um, that is actually, that's a very good point. Uh, the ability to raise your virtual hand in a meeting was removed with live meeting, which is something that I somewhat regret. However, we went around that by simply people uh, chatting. And the fact is that when you do live meeting, you will notice that you ignore the people that raise their hands. Okay. Since I realize we've got about 10 minutes left and I've got about uh, 30 minutes worth of presentation and the, uh, this is not working, uh, I'm going to have to skip on the demo, sorry, which is always a very bad thing. Do you mind if I just move on? I'll just go through the, some of the slides. I'm not blaming it on anyone. I actually wanted an interactive session. I had an interactive session. I prefer to run out of time on slides. But I do want to cover from a few things uh, about that. Okay. Um, thank you, Ronald. I could not have made as much money without your help. So uh, the, the thing that was different here is, as I said, the students did their labs on their own time. One other comment that was interesting is, OK, what if I have a problem? The suggestion was to use the discussion. A suggestion has been made by the students that I make a copy, uh, that I make a recording through Link of me doing the labs. Um, something I like, I like very much as an idea. I'm thinking more as a completely recorded session. Uh, unfortunately, we won't have the time to talk about that. But um, that would be an interesting alternative is to uh, record the, uh, the labs. Interestingly enough, um, when they don't have the trainer around for help, they manage quite well. Or they don't do the labs. A bit of both, actually, yeah. Yeah, uh, I've said it before. Actually, the, the first version of this slide started with, Ronald is a vampire, he never sleeps, okay? I, I've, had, I've always said that. I've had answers from Ronald at, uh, in the middle of the night, early morning, mid-afternoon, I, I have no idea, but uh, thanks again for your support because it's been uh, great. As I said, this was a big enabler. Without that technology, I just would not have been able to propose that to the uh, Microsoft Partner Program. Um, and another point, some of you might have used Veersoft or MLO. It should be labeled a, a drug. Once you've used hosted labs, you never, ever, ever again want to download an ISO file, create your own labs, or download the courseware or anything of the sort. That being said, um, I learned on the late, on the tail end, 
my motivation for courses is not the same one as my students. So I, care, I came to the habit of polling my, at the beginning of every single class, saying uh, to my students, are you up to speed with your labs? I'm afraid to say the result was much less than I would have liked to. And they, uh, they were trying to catch up. If you're two, three labs behind, that's not an issue. If you're six labs behind on a 412, that's a bit of an issue. So what I will do now is I will be much more of a disciplinarian when I deliver uh, online training. Hmm? What was the question, Martin? Simply, oh, um, name and shame. So, as I said, uh, I start every class, you know, we, we're typically running, a, always starting five minutes late because some people are connecting and things like that. Um, and I have, whenever we start now, I start with a poll, where are you with your labs? Up to date, minus two, minus four, minus six. And when people don't answer, I keep on prodding uh, and I will actually use their names uh, on the uh, system. Let me quickly show you the um, SharePoint. SharePoint was the Core Central, so we put everything about the lab uh, around it, um, including a wiki, and this is where the recordings were placed on the system. So if I go here, no, I have to. This is a um, couple of the uh, SharePoint that I created for the, uh, the purpose of the lab. It was done quick and dirty. Uh, but if you look here, there is first a description of the course and the different links to the uh, schedule and that sort of thing. Um, if you've got anything that announced that came up, they could obviously synchronize and you had the calendar that would show up at the bottom for the next course. This course has now uh, completed, so the information, or the, rather the last sessions have completed, so, uh, but you can see the information with the title and the link uh, to connect to the uh, online class and when it takes place and so forth so on. Um, we had a bunch of polls. So for example, if we had to change a time or if there was an issue, I used uh, polls. That's the second uh, angle here. The one part that I wished I have used a little bit more was the notion of a wiki. And that was just a question of uh, lack of time but that is one great tool for those classes where I was able to put information uh, to links outside of the system, links to presentation I did on PKI so that when we're dealing with certificates or Active Directory certificate services, they could understand the basics since that's not covered in the, the course. And I did a PKI for a dummy session during one of the tech ed. And the other thing is, for example, a um, couple of things that they might have asked so how do we install on a VHD, which is something that was of interest to a lot of people. And finally, as far as the lab, Ronald very often provides, uh, if there's something specific, for example, the ISO is already loaded, so translate it into French and put it as part of the uh, wiki for the, uh, the students. I just lost. Now we have the different recordings. Actually, you'll see them better here. Um, and one thing that I changed down the road is I initially just put the date. One of the students corrected me and said, you should put what module this represents and what lesson. So uh, we did that now in every single one. If you open one of those, it will then provide the different information for that particular uh, session. And what they typically had was a video of the session, the link recording as a zip file, and a transcript of the chat uh, window that they could download. Most of them did not use the chat. Most of them used the recorded uh, session directly into the aspect. Last thing is a bunch of uh, sites that are of use to the um, students. And that could be either regarding how you uh, train. So the, these are the links to the course and the exam but also to Skillpipe Reader, which was the tool we used for the courseware, to the Versoft uh, lab, so they just needed to click on that link to get to the uh, virtual labs, and finally the link to start their uh, link web app sessions and connect to it. Other things such as the Born to Learn wiki on the exam and the MCSA in 90 days, or information 
on Windows 91 and R2 since we were talking about uh, 2012 versions and the R2 was being presented during the, uh, the tech ed. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so the, the question is whether since the emails were readable from the invite, were they communicating outside? Um, we didn't have as much communication in the discussion forum as I would have liked. Um, they knew each other from different uh, reasons. It's a small enough country that they tend to meet often enough. So I don't think there was that much communication that uh, came out of it, but honestly I did not ask that question. So I don't know about that part. Good point. Okay. Um, the point here is this is the one I really want to improve in next courses. And I want to build a bigger platform on the SharePoint. Okay, so um, I should have expanded on the wiki. There's a lot that you can do. It's something that I'm just not using in current courses, so it is something that I would like to expand uh, for other courses because that's something that you can't use on uh, regular uh, inside uh, classrooms. Result of this, so we delivered four classes over the, I would say, two last thirds of the year. The first one was the Windows 8 course, and that was really as a beta. We wanted to see how it would work. We did not know if 9 session was going to be enough. We did not know if Link was going to support and things like that. The good news is that we did have some technical glitches. Um, I believe there was one session that we had to basically completely reschedule uh, outside of other aspects because we just could not connect. But it worked out pretty fine the very first time, okay, and did not have any issues, and we went on. That promoted us to move on to the MCSA program, and then uh, we did the 410, uh, 411, and 412. Uh, currently expecting to see the first, we just completed the 412 for the first group. Um, I currently expect the first MCSAs in January. I have the commitment to them that whoever passes the MCSA by January 10th, when we meet for a cheese fondue up in Gruyere, I will be paying for their dinner. So, which is a good position to be because it, uh, it makes me both wish that they pass and not regret it too much if they don't pass and I don't have to pay for dinner. Okay? Because as we realized, I didn't make that much money under that uh, training. Couple of things, as I said, uh, the hybrid model, I was lucky, it didn't, I did not plan that way, but the fact that we had a hybrid model with both in person and online I think was very helpful. You were talking about, uh, Ronald was talking about how they, whether they communicated among themselves outside of the classroom. There was already a relationship and I didn't realize at first but I know that I was able to use that uh, through the class and it wasn't something I thought about initially. Always know your students so that's a uh, good thing. Um, student tracking, yeah, you might know them. They're really a nice bunch of people, don't trust them. They, I was both surprised on how far behind they got themselves uh, on labs and some of them on the exams. So there are, I know there are certain fondues I will not have to pay in January because basically they have to pass three exams before January 10th and I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, those that will only have to pass one, no problem. So because we tend to, commit it, to be committed to our jobs because our job completes on Friday and we don't follow afterwards, that was just something where I messed up. I need to be much closer, monitor my students and things like that. The tool did not help in that sense with Link as we uh, mentioned. So Martin's uh, comment is quite correct that, you know, we don't know what happens after Friday. Um, the difference is that previously I didn't care. I'd received my MTM evaluation. Next week was another course, and I didn't have that, that sense. Uh, and it was their responsibility because very often they did not go to the certification, but a valid point, yeah. Um, in this case, it was much more important for me. Um, the courses took place, as I said, from 5.30 to 7.30. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Now, the thing is, I did get a couple of weeks from hell 
and it's nice to be flexible, it is hellish. So basically, I was giving a full mock in one city from 9 to 5, then either trying to find a hotel or staying at the CPLS to deliver the training on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 5.30 to 7.30, and then still have an hour, an hour and a half of driving or train to get back home in order to wake up back at 6 in the morning or 5 in the morning, depending where I'm teaching at the time to go back. And it came upon weeks where I was also doing tech at nights, which is something we do on Tuesdays and take place from 6.30 to 9.30, and we rarely finish before 10 in the evening with once again an hour and a half of driving. Okay, so I was not, those two or three weeks, I was not a pretty sight, uh, and I'm not even sure if I taught them anything because I think that I was just blah, 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 on the presentation. So uh, that's part of the new flexible program. That's uh, that stuff. Next step for me is I want MLX. I'm excited. I'll, I look forward to trying that platform and things like that. I do realize I'm out of time. Yeah. Um, MLX. Think of MLX as a uh, the MVA for CPLS. Wow, that sounded like very much of an MCT response. Uh, how can you put a full sentence with only initials in it? So the Microsoft Virtual Academy for the certified partners. So think of the each certified partners being able to have their own little MVA hosted by Microsoft. Yes, yes. Good point. Yes, the, so the question is, will it provide the tools like raising one hand, uh, following the, uh, the virtual machines, and you're sitting right next to the person who's putting the, uh, the infrastructure on the, uh, the labs around, so Ronald can answer. But the answer is yes. Um, you will have metrics also on the students. You will have uh, social networking, so it is something uh, that goes beyond the current MVA. Currently, MVA is we present. It's very close to what I've been doing in Link. People present. There is a chat window and that gets recorded and that re get re replayed without the SharePoint site I created, uh, without those things, okay? But it, it goes beyond that. So the suggestion is to use to go to training for, from uh, Citrix. Um, that might answer, you know, that was a uh, comment on Ronald saying, should I look into another alternative? I kind of like Microsoft products. I like the logo, the new logo. It's kind of cool, but uh, should maybe look at something else. Yeah. We have not yet decided whether we're going to extend this to the MCSC program or whether we're repeating it to next year. We're looking from the partners uh, on the uh, the aspects. Um, that has also opened possibilities for some doing it for commercial partners for um, a, a particular CPLS. And as I said, moving to the uh, MLX. I've used, uh, the question is whether some people are using WebEx. I've used WebEx one time. I'm much happier using a uh, link, and not simply because I like the Microsoft logo. Okay. No, uh, and I've had a couple of experiences which have not been terrible, but they've not been great, and I'm getting a lot of feedback from people saying, yes, yeah, not, not it. So the, the suggestion is using a, uh, a tool from Adobe. Yeah, but it's Adobe. Yeah, no, no, no. It's, I can live with Cisco. Adobe, I can't live with. <laughs> Welcome. OK, I hope this was a bit helpful. Sorry if we ran over time. Um, as I said, I wanted something that was very interactive. And I should have probably uh, planned a few slides, and I was hoping for a demo, uh, but that didn't go. So thanks again.